Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to the show. I'm Deanna Yates, and you are listening to episode 199 of the Wanna Be Clutter Free podcast. On today's episode, I am chatting with fellow minimalism, decluttering, organization podcast host, Emily McDermott, about her journey into living a life with less stuff and just her tips and tricks on what has worked for her. And we're actually going to dive into the science behind clutter, which I can totally nerd out on all day. So hopefully you enjoy this show as well. I always find it is really helpful to have just kind of some background information as to why we're so into our stuff and what causes clutter and what it does to us when we have too much stuff around. So I think it's a really important and interesting conversation to have, and I hope you like it as well. Plus, Emily's totally down to earth, and you're just going to love the conversation we have today. So thanks for joining me. But before we get into our conversation, I do want to say thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you're taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you are super busy, and you've got lots of things on your plate. Hopefully, I'm able to provide some information and encouragement and help as you are going about throughout your day, which you're probably on a walk, doing the dishes, going for a run, driving your kids somewhere. So hopefully, uh, we can give you some good information today as you are doing that, and I'm along for your daily ride. So thank you so much for having me with you. And if you like what you hear today, there's a few ways you can help the show. One, you can share it with a friend. Always super helpful. It's actually the number one way I can grow the show and a really great way for you to help support what we do here every week. You can also leave a rating and a review for the show. Most commonly, that's going to be on Apple, Spotify, or on YouTube, but you can generally do that in whatever app you are using to listen to this episode right now. You can comment on the show and share it on social media. If you do that, I would love if you would tag me so that I can, one, bring a smile to my face, and two, so that I can shout you out as well. Or you can become a supporter of the show, and for as little as $5 a month, you can get all of the episodes ad-free. Of course, I will leave links in the show notes, or you can go to wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash 199 for more information. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 199. All right, let's get to meeting my guest this week. If you joined us for the Chaos to Calm Summit, you have already met Emily. She was our debut speaker for the summit, and uh, she did not disappoint. She is pretty amazing and knows her stuff, and it was so fun to connect with her. But Emily McDermott is a wife, mother of two energetic boys, and a simplicity seeker. She is also the host of the top 1% globally ranked podcast, Moms Overcoming Overwhelm, where she helps moms declutter their homes, heads, and hearts. Mm, Love it. Emily enjoys writing poetry, dancing, and eating peanut butter out of the jar. I do too. (laughs) Anyway, we have a really fun conversation. We connect on a lot of different topics, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get to our conversation. Well, hi, Emily. Thank you so much for joining us on the Wanna Be Clutter Free podcast. How are you doing today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me, Deanna. I can't wait to chat with you today. I'm thrilled that you're here. It's so nice to chat with you again. We chatted when you were part of the Chaos to Calm Summit, and then you actually had me on your podcast as well. So I am just really excited to continue our conversation. We always get into some really fun topics, and today is not going to be any different. But before we get there, can you just tell us about yourself and how you help busy moms? Yeah, of course. So I am Emily, and I've been on this minimalism decluttering journey for almost 10 years now. It's hard to believe, but I currently have a podcast just like you called Moms Overcoming Overwhelm, and I'm helping those overwhelmed mamas declutter their homes, heads, and hearts, and then I do some decluttering coaching. And yeah, it's really great. I actually am a mom to two boys that are six and almost eight, 
and just going through the different seasons of motherhood and the stuff that comes with kids <laughs> has been a really interesting experience. And I just have a heart for helping moms figure out what matters most and then making room for it. So I just really love this space that you and I have connected in. Yeah. Yeah. So similar. Very, very similar. I only have one girl, but we definitely, yeah. Uh, being able to be her mom has been such an eye-opening experience. And she's like my little mirror. She just holds up like this little BS meter in front of me. And I'm just, oh, okay. I see. I see. You got that from somewhere. That is me. Okay. We're going to work on that. <laughs> and so it's been really fun. And then just seeing the things where she thrives and then being able to lean in that too, to be like, oh, that's also me. I need to like, okay, the way I see her is how people see me. And like just being able to go dive into that as well. But um, so yeah, I think that the mom journey is so much fun. And I love that. Um, I love being able to help moms just anywhere feel a little bit more confident in their life. And I know you do too. And so that's why I think we have connected and just been able to foster this lovely friendship so far. <laughs> so walk us through, you said you've been decluttering for about 10 years. Walk us through your journey. What made you say enough is enough? Yeah. So my foray into this, I always say I didn't go to college for stuff management. I went for international relations, which is totally not anything I'm doing right now. But I came to this because of an infertility journey that my husband and I really wanted to have kids. It wasn't happening. We had unexplained infertility. And then I learned about simplicity and minimalism and decluttering. And so it really served me as we were lucky enough to conceive our oldest via IVF. But then we had our surprise free baby, and then I ended up having two under two. And I think that's really when I was raising the white flag, because for me, I had already had that foundation of simplifying and living with less, but it was more the decisions and the decision fatigue. Also, I found out that I was actually an angry person, but I never knew it until I had children. <laughs> And that I was highly sensitive and still am to stuff, to noise, to my environment. And I started doing some research as I was going further along and coming out of kind of the trenches of when they were real little to find out I'm not crazy because stuff actually is stressing me out, which I know we're going to talk about the science a little bit today. But just it's not just me. There is more to it. And then, okay, I can recognize about myself, have that self-awareness that I'm highly sensitive and I can structure my environment with predictability, with routines, with being able to have less so I have less choice and less decision fatigue. And so it really was after my second that I started kind of ramping up the radically simplifying my life. <laughs> And it's not like everything is rainbows and everything all the time, but I will say that I feel far more peaceful and less reactive as a mom and as a person because of the simplifying that I have done. Totally. Yeah. I agree with you there. And yeah, that's the thing. I think too, yeah, I would get angry just because there was just, yeah, chaos, right? The chaos just causes a moment where you don't have a minute to breathe. You don't have that space where you can pause or you're always concerned that they're going to get into something or it just that to me was one of the big things too of being really mindful of what we brought in because once it was in, it was way harder to get out. Yeah, we realized our daughter was very sensitive. I mean, she would collect rocks and sticks and just the silliest things. And then she would know if you got rid of, you couldn't throw them away. She would like have a total fit because she knew where that rock was from and where she got it. And she almost had such an imagination that it just turned into something else. So that was for us too, that really the sensitive piece of then once it was there, you knew it was going to be there for a long time until she finally was ready to let it go. And that's gotten better with age, of course. Um, she's 10, so a little bit ahead of you on that, but um, not too far. <laughs> so yeah, she, but yeah, it was interesting. 
thank you also for sharing about your journey with IVF. I know that's a big topic right now on everybody's mind. We're not going to get into that because we are not a political show, but I do appreciate hearing stories. And I have a lot of friends that have gone that path as well. And I think it's really important that we have those opportunities available to us. I will leave it at that, but I do thank you for sharing your story on that as well. So how does your family feel about minimalism? Is this something where, so like for me, our daughter didn't really have the choice. Like we tried to limit before it came in because I knew that it was going to be a problem or we discovered early on it would be a problem. How is your family dealing with it? Did you get to a point where it was hard for them to declutter or has it always been something you've wanted to bring to the forefront and are they on board? Yeah, I would say that my kids are pretty much on board because they haven't known anything any different. (laughs) And I've always been a really organized person, tidy person. In fact, like growing up elementary school, if we had indoor recess, I would uh, organize and clean other kids' desks (laughs) for like a quarter, 50 cents or something. (laughs) I'm 43 for point of reference for inflation purposes. But I think that my kids just at a very young age, I recognize what they were playing with, what they weren't playing with, being able to, when they were a little bit older, talk about decluttering, what it was, where things were going. I used our local buy nothing group a lot, even from when they were little. So they would see things out on the porch and people coming to pick it up that I would be having conversations with these people. Oh, wow. Our kids are a little younger than you, and this is so great that you are donating this. So there was a lot of positive association. Also, when it comes to artificial boundaries, they have known that all their lives as far as like for their little trinkets and treasures, I'm using in air quotes, that they have this little shoebox a piece. And anytime we have dentist, birthday party, Valentine's Day, any of these things, you get all the stuff, the influx, they play love like maybe no, which is they start with what they love, then what they like, then they're making decisions on the maybes and getting rid of the no's. And at a very young age, they're able to declutter with ease because they understand those artificial boundaries. Now, my husband has always known since he's known me that I'm organized and I like things tidy. And he pretty much is too. I will say that I did what you are quote unquote supposed to do, that you start with your own stuff first. So I was never pressuring him. And he never had a lot of men. I hear that a lot of guys have collections and they have all of these random things from high school. And my husband doesn't really have any that I didn't have to deal with that. But it was more that I started saying, hey, on Fridays, I'm going to Goodwill to drop this off. If you have anything, let me know. And now he will proactively come to me and he's, yeah, I'm done with this. Uh, Could you help me get rid of it? I kind of joke. I'm like the decluttering mafia. And I'm like, hey, you need to get rid of something. I'm going to help you get rid of it. Just put it in my trunk. You know, (laughs) I'm your person. I'm your gal. I'm your gal. So, yeah, it has not been much of a struggle, luckily, for my immediate family. The joke in my family is if it's not bolted down, I might take it and get rid of it. So I do make sure I pause and I'm like, okay, am I doing this too early? And But overall, it's been a very positive experience for me. I'm lucky. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, Emily's going to tell us if there's anything she regrets decluttering. I get this question all the time. It's a super fun one to ask others as well. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're Amy more of a we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. Nice. Is there anything you regret decluttering? 
it's funny, I just did an episode on this <laughs> about how to avoid fear of decluttering regret. I would say the only, I had to think about it because I was like, have I ever regretted anything in 10 years, almost 10 years? The only thing has been when I declutter my youngest's clothes too early. <laughs> so we're recording this in March and in Northern Virginia where I am, it's you think it's spring and it's 60 degrees and you're like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And then today when the kids went out, it was like 29. So for me, I would like declutter and I'm like, okay, he's grown out, it's done. And then I'm like, oh wait, he still needs a coat. <laughs> oh wait, he still needs these pants. So that would be the only thing, but there's never been anything like like sentimental or anything where it's, oh, I said I might use it someday and then I got rid of it and I needed it again. And I do that minimalist, like the 2020 rule. I find that's pretty accurate that most times you can replace something for $20 or get it within 20 minutes of your home or now Amazon, you can just have it shipped to you usually. So yeah, there hasn't really been anything. Sometimes I just get a little declutter happy with my kids clothes a little early. That's all. Yeah. I will say there's two things that I've thought of this question to myself. And there's two things that have popped up in my head and I've been like, oh man, one more than the other. So the one that I'm just like, oh, that would have been fun to have was a sombrero from our wedding. We had a destination wedding in Mexico and didn't have a bachelor bachelorette party, but everyone was there a day ahead of the wedding. And so all the girls pitched in, bought me that hat and took me out dancing. And there was a time where in one of our house, we've moved so much, like 16 times in 20 years. We have moved a ton and not just within the same city, countries. We've had to be very careful about what we've kept. And that hat didn't make the cut. And I remember being in one of our houses being like, oh, it'd be so cute on that wall. Now in this house, I'm not sure where I would put it. So I just know that it's just an emotional thing. And I have a picture of a really cute picture of me in the hat. So it's not something I'm going to forget. Just one of those things where I know people are going to have moments where there's something that they miss and I don't want to totally cherry put the cherry on top and be like, no, I never missed anything. There are pangs every once in a while, but nothing where I'm like devastated or it affects my life in any way. It's always just like a, oh, that would have been cute on that wall. Oh, well, you know, and kind of moving on. The second one is our, is my snowboard. Oh, my husband and I sold our snowboards when we lived in Chicago and we moved to Europe. This is when we went to Europe for about a year and a half. And we sold our snowboards because we lived in Chicago. We planned to come back to Chicago. We had no idea we would be living in San Diego. And we thought, we'll just get new ones. And I still have yet to buy a new... Actually, I do have a new snowboard, but I don't have snowboard boots now. I got my neighbor's snowboard last season. And my husband still doesn't have a snowboard, but he kept his snowboard boots. So we're like a hodgepodge mess over here on the ski equipment. But now that we've gotten back into it, we don't see us going anywhere. It's time to replace it. And I try to remember and remind myself, like, I might have outgrown that snowboard. It might not actually work anymore. Like I took five years off when I was pregnant and then up until we took our daughter to the mountains. So, you know, it's like it just sat there for five years. I'm so glad someone else is using it and trying to remember that. But every time now I go skiing, I'm like, I really wish I had those snowboard boots. Which actually were hand-me-downs from my cousin. So I deserve to have new stuff. Next year, I think we're going in and this will be our, that'll be our year of, okay, our gifts for Christmas, anniversary, birthdays, because he's right, he's before Christmas, I'm after Christmas, and then our anniversary's right in the middle. It's okay. It's all that stuff, but which is going to be great because then we'll get exactly what we want. We know we want it. It won't go unused. And anyway, so I just like to point out that sometimes there are going to be those things but I do think that the minimalist rule, the 2020, 20 minutes, $20 is a really good one. And it's not going to, you know, make or break. But other than that, I can't think of anything else. And those are even silly, right? They're not even like major life altering things. So anyway, cool. Thanks for sharing. We're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, we're jumping into the science behind decluttering and why clutter causes so many problems in our lives. I want to talk, we were, I, you alluded to this and I teased it in the intro that we're going to talk about the science behind decluttering 
and the science behind clutter really and how it affects our well-being as busy women. So what research have you seen on this topic? I could geek out about this stuff all day long. I'm super excited. Let's do it. Yeah. So I'm not going to get into every single one, but I can also, Deanna, send you some of the studies so you can link some stuff in the show notes. And the reason I like to do that is not only because I find it fascinating, but if you have a spouse or partner that's really like a facts or figures type of person, my husband is very much show me the data, then you can go to them with that data and to be like, no, I'm not crazy. This is actually a thing. I would say... Of the things that clutter is impacting, we have our time, obviously, that we know that it takes up our time because of having to store and maintain and clean around it. But the other main things are our peace and our anxiety and then our physical health. So I'm going to go into just a couple studies about that. I think the most famous probably in our kind of decluttering minimalism circle was a 2010 study where they were following couples around their homes. And the researchers were with the couples and the women that were describing their homes as like cluttered or disorganized or anything like that. They actually had higher cortisol levels in their saliva than women that describe their homes in more positive terms. And that also, I always like to point out and always the women like nod their heads, <laughs> that the husbands did not have the same rise in cortisol levels. So I just find it really fascinating that it actually has that direct impact on anxiety, but also when it comes to focus and what we see, if you look in a room and see surfaces covered with everything our brain is registering that as undone tasks, which can then impact our stress levels. So if I'm looking in the kitchen, there's dishes in the sink, there's papers everywhere, there's a form I forgot to sign, and then, oh, wait, my anniversary's tomorrow and I forgot to sign the card. It's just my brain is telling me I need to do all of these things on top of my to-do list that's already in my head all the time. So it's impacting our stress because our brain is seeing it not only as visual stimulus overwhelm, but also as things that we have to do. So I would say those two aspects really impact the stress aspect of how clutter impacts us. Yeah. Is that the UCLA study? I don't know if that's not the UCLA one. I don't think so. It's not. Okay. Well, they had that as well in that study. Oh, maybe it is then. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, here's the thing. It's not surprising that it's proven more than once because it's so true. <laughs> but yeah, I actually went out and I bought that book that goes along with the UCLA study. It is fascinating. I'll make sure I send you. I had to get it through like a used bookstore that had it from a library. Like it's not in print anymore. I paid probably way too much for this book, but I have it like it's totally dog-eared on the side. I'll have a picture of it and send it to you. But yeah, it was that one's fascinating. So I could not put that down. <laughs> yeah. When I guess my other two favorites that have to do more with the physical health side, one of them is from I it's one of the National Sleep Institute places. <laughs> I know this sounds really official. Don't worry, I have the studies. I just don't have them right in front of my face. But it found that in a cluttered bedroom, there's higher sleep disturbances and lower quality sleep. And again, when we think about stuff as our brain registering as undone tasks, if you are in a room where you're supposed to be resting and you're surrounded by all of this stuff, it's hard for your brain to, to shut down. And the last one is in a cluttered kitchen. I think this was in 2016, that if a these women were in cluttered kitchens and they had the choice between cookies, crackers, and carrots, what do you think they picked? Uh, in a cluttered kitchen? They went for the cookies. Yeah, they went for the cookies. <laughs> and then they were also journaling. And so if they were journaling about how stressed they were and they were in the cluttered kitchen, then they were eating more um, yeah, then they were eating more cookies. And I know for me, if I'm in a kind of stressful, cluttered environment, then I personally go for the sweets. <laughs> so that didn't surprise me at all. But just the impact, again, we have our stress, we have our sleep, we have what we're eating. 
And also just like clutter in your home, it impacts your ability to move through your home. So you can think about the physical health of you and your children as far as like just being able to move freely and to be in this place that's supposed to be a haven. If, if your haven feels like a prison, <laughs> then we need to do something about it because our home is supposed to protect us from the craziness of the outside world. But a lot of times people feel like they're drowning and stuff in their own home that's supposed to be the haven. So it really, it's impacting us because we're not so much now after the pandemic, but we're here at our homes a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It reminds me of, so we're having a party tonight, actually, as we're recording this, and we're having 14 people, eight adults, six kids, which our house is not big. So this is going to be a lot. It's going to be a thing. (laughs) And so I helped our daughter clean up her room yesterday. It was just one of those things where it's like over time, right? We haven't done it in a while. I took a, a bit of a break in February and we went, we traveled, she had a week off, we've traveled around. So her room just got out of control and we spent, I don't know, really just one day doing it. We would do 20 minutes. We set a timer, 20 minutes, and then she got a break, 20 minutes. Then she got a break because it was just too much. And that's, she's only 10. And, but after three 20 minute sessions, her room was totally cleared up and she was like this morning, or actually she went to bed last night. She's this feels so good. She goes, oh my gosh, we've got to do this more often. This feels so good. And she woke up this morning and she was like, oh, I'm so excited to have everyone over tonight. You know, she's now I can probably fit all six kids in here. And we're like, two of them are a little bit older. They probably won't be hanging out in here, but you never know. But for sure, she's, I can fit everyone in here. And she was so excited about it. And her room's tiny. It's only 10 by 10. Like we do not live in a big house. And so anyway, but it was just, it's, true, right? You could just even see it in her being able to clear it up and she knows where her stuff is now and it feels good. And we threw out a bunch of stuff because again, she's a little treasure hoarder. She loves all those little trinkets, but she just needs a moment with it. And then after a while, she's, oh, I don't I'll throw that away. I don't want it anymore. You know, she looks at me like I'm crazy, like, mom, I don't want that anymore. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I got you. Okay. (laughs) But yeah, it is. It really, it is interesting how it affects our children too. Because I think sometimes we think that they can, they're so malleable and they're so flexible and they can thrive in anything, but they really do thrive better in a clean environment. Have you found that? (laughs) Yeah. And just, oh, definitely. And I, one of my favorite parenting books that I ever read is Simplicity Parenting by Kim John Payne. And there's a part in there that I just will always remember about how kids live so much by their senses, especially when they're little, they're putting everything in their mouths, think about babies, they're touching everything. And so if you have every single surface covered with stuff, it is tactile and visual stimulus overwhelm for them. And I always talk about the dump and go where you have like the kids have the bin and they dump it and they go to the next one and they dump it and they dump it. And as parents, we think they're bored, right? We want to go get them more toys, but they're actually overwhelmed by what they have already. And so if we recognize that and recognize the impact that it has on their health and their development, just being able to have less gives them that peace and that space. And like your daughter, just the, huh. Kids need that too, because they're in school, they're in extracurriculars, they're, you know, go, go, go. They need a place where they can fully relax too. And that can't be a room full of stuff, right? No, for sure. For sure. Okay. So how do we, now that we know we need to get the clutter out, where do you like to tell people to start decluttering and organizing? Yeah. Well, there's always different opinions. And I say, if you're starting, then you're in the right place if you're starting, right? (laughs) If you made the decision. But I always recommend the car because it is a small contained area where it's mostly trash. You want a very high trash to sentimental item ratio (laughs) wherever you start. And then you feel really good because you're like, oh, you're doing drop off. You're like, this feels nice. I'm not like sitting on goldfish crumbs all the time. And then moving into those unsentimental, unemotional areas. So maybe your bathroom, maybe your mudroom, maybe the kitchen. I like to say moldy leftovers. If you get rid of those, it counts as decluttering. 
And so you're, because decluttering is decision-making and we don't want to pick up the 50 pound weight of our decluttering decisions by doing that sentimental stuff. We want to start with the real easy weights and that are the things that are more trash, things that need to be relocated or things that are easy decisions. So whatever that might be for you and like you were doing with your daughter, setting that timer for a short amount of time and that will be a great place to start. And I think that our recording software agrees because we get some thumbs up here, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I The car is interesting. I hadn't really thought about starting in the car, but I like your reasoning behind it. I think it's probably because we're not in our car very often. We have I have tried to set my life up as an anomaly. <laughs> Uh, we live in Southern California. It is very car centric here, but I don't like traffic. So I try really hard to stay out of our car. Right now we're lucky because that's going to change in another year. She's going to switch schools and we're going to have to drive to school. We should to get on the five freeway to go to her junior high. It's, I know, two stops on a freeway. I'm like, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to make it, but it'll be fine. And, but it's just one of those things where, yeah, I'm not in the car very often, but I love that idea because you are right. It's somewhere where most of the stuff in there, one, you know where it goes. And two, it probably, most of it probably goes in the trash. Cause I don't know about you, but our car is filled with like wrappers in the door side pocket. <laughs> And so it's just, okay, just get all that stuff out and throw it away. And then, yeah, run through the, run through one of those little, I don't know, do you guys have a lot of those car washes now that have popped up that have the vacuuming and all that kind of stuff? We have one of those. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's right next to Aldi where I go grocery shopping. And so when I, every other grocery trip or whatever, I'll stop at the Soapy Joe's and free shout out to Soapy Joe's. Soapy Joe's, that's such a cute name. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I like to stop there and it's just, you run the car through the car wash, but then they have the towels and you dry it off. So it actually feels clean and then you can vacuum it and I love it. And it's 13 bucks. Super simple. But yeah, anyway, off topic. <laughs> so do you have any tips for how people can find time? Because again, that's one of the biggest things I hear is I just don't have time. I'm just so busy. So what are your recommendations when people say that to you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I do hear it a lot too. Sometimes I like to give some tough love. And I like to say, if you have 15 minutes to scroll Instagram and look at ads and go to Target to get a bunch of stuff you don't need, you probably have time. But with the understanding, we have so many that are working full time and then their kids have the extracurriculars and everything. And in as much as you can incorporate it into your everyday life. So what might that look like? So your kids doing homework at the kitchen table and they're like, okay, I need a pencil. Do we have a pencil? You get the thing of pencils at and you're like, oh my gosh, like five of these are broken and we don't use these and this highlighter is not working. So like in the moment where you're looking at that particular drawer, you can easily see maybe some things that are working and not working and pitch those. Maybe your kid is reading and you look at the bookshelf and you're like, hey, do you still read this? No, I don't need that anymore. Okay. And so and as much as we can and to be able to do that as we're going along, then great. And otherwise, just if you can, and that's one reason why my solo episodes are 15 minutes, I just say, hey, put on an episode, you're going to be inspired, and then pick that one small subcategory. So don't do your entire closet. You're just doing short sleeve shirts today, just the short sleeve shirts, and then you're good. And so if you Anytime you're doing something that you perceive to take a lot of time or that is a lot of work and a lot of that brain energy being expended, just trying to pair it with a more positive, uh, exciting activity, something enjoyable, then that can help too. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's a great tip. I like to put on when I really don't want to do anything, I like to put on like a mystery book, like a, a fiction book, because I can get so lost in it. Although, Again, this is, I have been decluttering for a very long time. I don't have to make as many decisions, right? I know what I want, what I don't want, what I'm ready to let go of, that kind of a thing. So if you are, yeah, I should put a caveat there. If you are new to this, definitely try this without audio stimulation of like words, 
use like a deep focus playlist or something or Emily's podcast where she's helping you <laughs> in 15 minute sprints. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a decluttering playlist and so far. For- oh, I have one on Spotify. We have Let It Go, but do you have Another One Bites the Dust by Queen? Yep, I got that. I've got Boomerang by Imagine Dragons. I've got, what else is on that list? Oh, Miss Moving On by Fifth, Fifth, Fifth Harmony. So I've got a lot of that kind of stuff, like a little bit of a breakup kind of a feel to it. Because you are breaking up with your stuff. (laughs) So it's a little bit of a, I'm out of here. Like I'm over it. I'm done. (laughs) Taylor Swift, we're never getting back together. Maybe that could be one. (laughs) Yes. I need to update it a little bit with a little bit more because we've gotten into Taylor Swift recently in our house. So I need to add her to the playlist a little bit. I honestly think when I was putting this playlist together, maybe she didn't have her versions. So now we can get the Taylor's version on there. For all the Swifties listening, I'm learning. There's lots of learning going on in my house. (laughs) But yeah, I love that. Yes. Having a declutter playlist is great because it does give you that little kick in the butt. Music can be such a huge motivator of just like, come on, You can do this. It's like you said, a little bit of tough love, but in a nice way. (laughs) Yeah. So very cool. Very cool. Well, Emily, I know people are going to want to reach out to you, find out more. So where can they find you? Yeah, the best place is my podcast. So wherever you're listening to Deanna, you can find me at Moms Overcoming Overwhelm. And I have a Facebook group where we do decluttering challenges every other week, again, 15 minutes a day. And then I give away coffee gift cards and coaching and stuff. And we have a lot of fun over there. So yeah, that's the best way to find me. That's awesome. I love that. All right. Well, before I let you go, of course, we will link to those in the show notes too. So anybody can just click on through so you don't actually have to even look for her. (laughs) But before I let you go, I have three rapid fire questions I always like to end my episodes with. So number one, what does clutter-free mean to you? Oh, clutter-free. I was thinking it was the definition of clutter. I read that. (laughs) Okay. I would say clutter-free is that everything that you own and the way that you're spending your time is something that's serving you now or serving the person that you want to become. That's what I would say. Mm, That's a good one. Number two, what is making you happy right now or in this season of your life? I would say that I have put days aside in my calendar specifically for taking care of my house. And I know that sounds weird, (laughs) but as an entrepreneur, I find that I was trying to focus so much on work and then I was getting a little bit scattered and not managing stuff at home because I really don't like, speaking of things you don't like to do, I really don't like to clean. (laughs) So I was like, I am going to give myself permission to do the grocery pickup and the vacuuming and doing these things on certain days to give a little bit more structure to my week. And it has made me happier because I'm giving myself permission to recognize taking care of my home as like a productive activity instead of it always having to be that I have to be like doing working or income generating tasks, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah. As somebody who has been an entrepreneur also for a very long time with different businesses, that struggle of always working, right? But trying to figure out, yeah, how can I love that idea of this is my house day. This is my this day. And batching those tasks makes a lot of sense. So I really like that idea. Very cool. And then the last one, what is a goal you have for yourself this year? Okay. So I've heard this term, big, hairy, audacious goal, BHAG. <laughs> so my, my BHAG is that I have all these poems that I've written about motherhood and various seasons of my own motherhood. And I've wanted to make just like a book or an ebook or something And it's just been a back burner project that I haven't done. So I have told myself that this year is the year that goes out in some form or fashion so that I can share that with other moms that would hopefully be blessed by it. What a fun goal. I love that. That is amazing. And y'all, okay, Emily wrote me a song. So I did not perform it yet. I was coming off of a cold. I tried recording it. It almost threw my voice out. But next year, hopefully, my daughter and I 
will record this song for the Chaos to Calm Summit because it is so cool. She rewrote the lyrics for Wannabe by the Spice Girls and it's legit. It is so good. So I hope I can do it justice and maybe I can get a few of the other speakers to join me on singing it because I don't know that I can carry that all myself. Whew, Miss Spice Girls, big shoes to fill. But it was so awesome. And so she's really talented, you guys. So when her book comes out, please check it out. That's going to be really awesome. I can't wait to see it. So that's an awesome goal. Good for you. Yay. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us some really good advice and helping us with kind of the science of like why we really should be looking at getting the clutter of, out of our house as a way to love ourselves and really become the best versions of ourselves. I look forward to linking to all of those studies in the show notes so people can get more information and maybe geek out like you and I do on it and really help maybe motivate the others in their life if they're not on board as well. So thank you so much, Emily. You have a great day. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. All right. Cheers. So what'd you think? Did you enjoy my conversation with Emily as much as I did? I hope you did. And I hope you could see that we really are on this mission just to help you have a better life. And we know that stuff is not the way to do that. The science proves it. The science shows us that the stuff in our homes, if it overwhelms us, actually causes way more harm than good. So don't forget, Emily has a ton of those statistics on her website. I will leave links in the show notes for that as well so that you can get over there and find out and really dig into the science behind it if you are interested. There is so much. You can definitely go deep. It's a really fun topic. But I would love to know your thoughts on this episode. Was there anything that really shocked you or surprised you? Maybe a new statistic you heard or somewhere where you're thinking like, you know what? I know I've heard that before, but I think I'm finally understanding it or I'm finally ready to dive in deeper and make a change or do something a little bit differently. I would absolutely love to know. Those are the thoughts that just light me up every day. So come on over and share it with me. I'm on Instagram. You can send me a DM or you can comment on this post. I'm at wannabe clutter free on the social channels, or you can join our private community over on Facebook. It's the wannabe minimalist family community. You can share with the community there, get some feedback, maybe commiserate, maybe have a few aha moments there as well. You can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts, a comment on Spotify. You can comment on YouTube and I can comment back to you. And remember, if you know somebody who you think might actually benefit from these statistics as well or from this conversation, one of the best ways you can support the show is to share it with a friend. So thank you so much for doing that. And of course, a special thanks to Emily for coming on the show and just continuing to share what has worked in her life and what changes she's made and what she has seen be positive on her journey. That was really helpful. Remember, you can get more detailed show notes and all of her links by heading over to wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 199. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash 199. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you. Until next time, take care, keep things simple, don't let clutter stand in your way, and remember, I believe in you. With that, I hope you have an amazing day. I'll be back next week for a solo show. I'm Deanna Yates, and you've been listening to Wanna Be Clutter Free. I'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>